All right, so this is one of those, you know it or you don't. Uh, if you read through it the first time, you get confused, skip it. And when you come back and you see that you're looking through and we see that they're telling us that um, P of X is a polynomial. And when you plug in three, four X of that polynomial, um, the outcome or the output is negative two, which of the following must be true. And then they have a bunch of facts here. And what you, at this point, you think that like, maybe I can come up with something and I'm going to show us an example where you can, but that's honestly, if you're feeling confused, chances are you may not be able to do that in test conditions. So just go ahead and, you know, do your best guess. If you pick one letter for the whole test, use that. Um, some may see that, well, D is completely different and you want to go for that. I, I mean, no D is the correct answer. Um, it, this case, that's just luck. I've seen plenty of answers where, you know, it's like something that looks like C where it falls in line with most of the other choices. And the one that's the outlier is not the answer. Um, okay. So let's, I, it, you have to know it or you don't. So the, what I'm going to do on this problem is just explain the logic behind it. And because we see that it's a must be true problem, what that means is that if I write a polynomial, right? In this case, I chose x squared plus x minus 14. And the reason I chose this specific polynomial is that if I plug in three for x, I know that I'm gonna end up with negative two. This is nine plus three, which uh, is uh, 12. And then, uh, so 12 minus 14 equals negative two. So this is a polynomial that if I plug in three, I do get 12. And uh, the uh, fact that I can write that out, so when I divide that by x minus three, um, this is called poly like long division. You don't want to do this, by the way, on test day. I want to clarify that. You just have to understand where this is coming from. Uh, in the explanations from College Board, they specifically just call it the polynomial remainder theorem, which is you just know that when you plug in a number for x, that uh, and that gives you an answer, an out a certain output, that output would also be a remainder if you were to divide it by x minus that input. Um, so this is just to help you understand that if on test day, you're going through all these steps, you're wasting time. Uh, but maybe this will prepare you for a test day on another problem to better understand it. So anyways, if I divide, um, this polynomial and I can do that here, cause it's always good to practice that. So dividing by a polynomial, that means that, uh, I'm going to put X minus three into this polynomial. So the way you do that is I look at our first term here, X squared. And I ask myself, well, how many times is X going to X squared? And that's X times. So I'm now going to subtract by. Uh, this term times that term. And so that gives me x squared minus 3x because uh, x times x is x squared, negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And I'm going to subtract this term. So just to make sure I don't mess anything up, I'm going to add the opposite signs here. And I know I did it right when these get eliminated. And now I have 4x minus 14. And now I ask myself, x minus 3 has to go into this here. And I need to know, well, how many times does x go into 4x? Well, that'd be four times. And since that's positive, I put plus four. And then I can now uh, subtract the product of this and this from this. So uh, four times x is four x. Four times negative three is negative 12. And I'm subtracting this. So the best way to make sure I don't mess up my positive is to add the flipped signs. Now that's for me, it's not for everyone, but whatever helps you make sure that you get the negatives done right. And then here you are, you have negative two. And I see that that is my, indeed my remainder, which would be written as negative two over X minus three. And this is our answer here. Now, <clears throat> the and then it's plus that. And so the idea here is that that for sure backs up D. Now, when I look at X squared plus X minus 14 as just a polynomial by itself, I see that, None of these are actually true in this case. Could they be true? Yeah, I could create a polynomial where indeed X minus five is a factor and it still gives me an output of negative two when I put in three, but that polynomial, whatever it is, would still actually uh, give me a remainder of negative two if I divided it by X minus three. So D is true in every sense of any polynomial that we can come up with. Whereas A, B, and C will only be true some of the time. And since they're saying must be true, that only leaves D as the correct answer. And uh, uh, yeah, that's, we'll leave it there. Good luck on that one.